try to twist and pervert the truth. The gospel of Christ cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against Amen. the knowledge of God. Do you know why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God? Because the Bible declares in Philippians 2.9. Well, for God has also exalted Jesus highly. God the Father. And has given him a name. And at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee has got to bow. Hallelujah. Yes. Heaven. On earth. And under the earth. Amen. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah. It is ordained. It is an eternal edict of God. If you don't believe me. Just try speaking the name of Jesus in a crowd, mixed crowd at work or somewhere in the public. Watch the effect it has on the hearers. You will find that their reactions will range from silent embarrassment, stoic rebellion, or enraged resentment. Why? Why these reactions? It's just the name of Jesus. Calls in the spirit. You have uttered the name upon which all that exists hangs on and has their being. Colossians 1.15 says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, governments, kings, governors, dictators, czars, presidents of the United States of America, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. He was in the Father before the Son was created. He was in the Father before the moon was created, before the earth took shape. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He is before all things, and by him all things consist or are held together and have their being. That's why the weapons of all warfare are not common, but mighty through Jesus. For it pleased the Father that in Jesus should all fullness dwell. Amen. Saints, when the fall of man took place in the first Adam, the father of all humanity, man was left empty. His soul became a vacuum filled with nothing but sin and death. It is from that same vacuum of his soul that man tries to draw out what he has heard to be righteous. We'll stop right there. We were in our prayer and Bible study meeting Friday at work. We were using the scriptures out of the Gospel of John. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Except you abide in me, you can bear no fruit. Every, every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it might bear more fruit. And every fruit that beareth not fruit, he cutteth and taketh away. And it gathered and burned. I told him, I said, outside of Christ Jesus, there is no righteousness, there is no good, there's no kindness, there's no mercy. Amen. Unless you're plugged into the source, the thing that the source produces can't be in your life. And I had, pardon me, I had a young man. Said, Wait a minute. He said, I don't mean to contradict you. You don't mind if I say something that's contradictory. Absolutely not, son. Go right ahead. What about the Dalai Lama? <laughs> Are you going to tell me that he's not a good person? 
I said, how many Dalai Lamas have there been? Well, sir, why have there been several? Well, because the other ones died. Exactly my point. They're all dead and stinking in the grave. A testimony to the fact that they are dead in their sins. Come on, hallelujah. I said, son, the Dalai Lama and all those that profess in life can only mimic righteousness. In their soul, because they're made in the image of God, there's the thumbprint of a God that they are in earnest to imitate, in earnest to replicate, but in no wise can they produce because they're fallen in their soul. Amen. Amen. That's why men build pyramids and totems and all manners of idolatry. Because inside their soul, they know that they, they're supposed to serve something. Yes. From that same vacuum of his soul that man tries to draw up what he has heard righteousness, kindness, affection, and love ought to be, only to come to the cold, cruel realization that in who he is intrinsically dwells no good thing. For the will and the desire to do good is constantly with him. But how to perform good without sinfully desiring to expend it upon his own lust, he finds not. Yes. Without Jesus, you can only love to want to be loved in return. You never love for love's sake. That's right. You're only kind to receive kindness in turn. You only give to receive back. Therefore, man finds that without Jesus, everything man tries to produce out of his sinful nature always had an ulterior motive. An ulterior selfish motive making those things that he yearns for as empty as a fallen soul he wants to fill up with. He can't eat enough. He can't buy enough. He can't possess enough. He can't pervert himself enough. He can't defile himself enough with women or with men to fill up that vacuum, that need, that, that desperation in his soul. Yeah. Everything he tries rocks in his hands. Therefore, because man without Jesus is morally bankrupt and spiritually destroyed, when he operates out of that empty vacuum of his soul, nothing he produces is ever enough. He can never be satisfied. And because he's never satisfied, there is absolutely no peace in his life. You know what men hunt for in a wife? Their relationship is lost in the garden. They're wanting somebody to love them. Wife seeks out a husband because she wants somebody to love her. When you're lost, you just eat one another up till there's just nothing left. And if he can never be satisfied, Himself or God. All of this is capitalized upon by the devil, the spirit of this world. Second Corinthians 4 talks about people that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine with them. Now listen to that. You who are going to witness need to know this. Listen to that. Here the scriptures de de declare that the God of this world, or the Spirit, it's a little G on the, the, the spelling. So he's not saying that Satan is the God of this world. It's little G, the Spirit of this world. Has blinded the minds of the lost in order for them not to see the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now why would the devil do this and what he used to do it with. Why would the devil, why not just wait till the end of the world? 
But why does the devil? 